The war of 1914-18 was not only fought with guns, but with intellect, a world war of minds and of the spirit. French and German thinkers clashed. German intellectuals rejected the criticism their country was facing en masse. On the battlefields, numerous writers and artists took up arms, even sacrificing their lives. Britain's Wilfred Owen, or Rupert Brooke. Germany's Ernst Junger. American Ernest Hemingway joined the fighting, as did the English J.R.R. Tolkien, author of Lord of the Rings. Famous Frenchmen included Guillaume Apollinaire and Alain Fournier. They went to their deaths defending ideals. 450 French authors were killed. Gérald de Lois is a professor of literature. He says all these men truly believed that the country was under attack and that this warranted any sacrifice. They had to defend what was most precious, the homeland. One of those who got into the war was the poet Charles Péguy, the most prominent example of this fervent patriotism. We're in Orléans, his birthplace. Péguy was killed a hundred years ago in the first days of the war. Here's a remarkable irony. In the Second World War, shrapnel struck his statue in the exact spot as the wound that cost Péguy his life on the 5th of September 1914. Le 5 septembre 1914. One hour's drive south of Paris today, in the city of Joan of Arc, France's warrior heroine whom the English burned at the stake in 1431, Charles Peggy was raised in poor circumstances by his widowed mother who mended chairs. There was nothing to indicate the boy was destined to write. His house is long since gone, marked by this plaque. But there is a museum. Aurélie Bonnet-Chavigny is the curator. He was a writer, a journalist, an editor, a polemicist and a poet. If he'd outlived the war, he would have become a great philosopher. Peggy set up his own publishing company called Les Cahiers de la Quinzaine, with the aim of publishing his and his friends' work twice monthly. I've emphasized this quotation from him. I love nothing as much as liberty. He sought no favors from anyone, no riches. He always said what he had to say. Always. Faithful to socialist ideals, Peggy defended Dreyfus in France's notorious anti-Semitic case of perversion of justice. He later became a devout Catholic. His legacy would be widely interpreted. Peggy died telling his soldiers, shoot good God. But some Catholics transcribed that as, shoot in the name of God. Aged 41, Peggy had not been obliged to sign up for action. In his last weeks, he wrote to his wife, I may perish, but I won't die. <laughs>